Good hello friends, my name is Melanie and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about all of the books that I read in the month of July. I definitely did say on Twitter, if you don't follow me there, that I wanted to read at least 20 books this month. I got kind of close. I, I didn't finish 20 books, but I was really close to finishing 20 and I'll explain. So I finished 15 books and started three. So technically in the month of July, 18 books were in the scope of my reading, which I think is pretty solid. I would say 15 books completed is great and I got a lot of pages read. Typically when I put books into my stats tracker, it will automatically calculate the pages regardless of if I finish the book or not. It just depends on when I mark it. So the numbers aren't always exact, but by the end of the year, the pages read does make sense. So when I'm looking at my July tracker, it does say that I've read 18 books even though I've only started three out of those 18. But when looking at the pages read, it says I've read 4,639 pages, listened to 49 hours with an average rating of 3.9 and with two books acquired. The pages read are gonna be a little bit less than that considering the fact that I didn't finish three of those books that are in the tracker. However, it's kind of interesting to see how that pans out and I definitely do think I was feeling a little bit slumpish towards the beginning of this month and because of certain books and we'll get into that as we get through the wrap up. Also in the month of July I participated in three readathons, the to be continued readathon which happened all month long, the beach readathon which happened from July 1st to the 10th, and then the reading rush which you guys saw last week from the 22nd to the 27th. But let's go ahead and jump to the beginning of the month when I started with Listen to Your Heart by Casey West. This was a book that I listened to over audio thanks to Scribd and it was pretty cute. It was a fun book. If I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't remember the entirety of the plot line because it was one of those books that you just kind of read and it doesn't... I can't personally say that it like really resonated with me, though I do think that it was so much fun. It gave me major Radio Rebel vibes in the sense that our two main characters are hosting a podcast and it's like an advice column for their high school and it's so much fun like so much fun and to see how each character develops was done really well however some of the petty drama wasn't what i was all about granted it is a ya and i'm starting to slip away from that a little bit more and i mean don't get me wrong, I've read a bunch of great YAs, but for me personally, this was just something kind of fun, kind of predictable. And although it didn't feel like anything super special to me, it still was a lot of fun. And I gave this a three star rating. So here we get into some of the books that I started and did not finish. The first being God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. The reason I'm mentioning it is because I did start this at the beginning of the month and I got about halfway through and I still haven't picked it up. I honestly can't remember the last time I picked this book up. And following the events of Nevernight, this just kind of feels a little lackluster to me. I think I'm really struggling with how much this is jumping back and forth and I can't find myself consistently feeling the setting as well as the gladiator vibes just aren't it for me. I don't know why I'm struggling so hard with this book. However, I am going to try and finish it over the next two days because I kind of just, I think I can grind through those next 200 pages or so if I set my mind to it and hopefully you'll hear about it in my August wrap up because I really don't want to DNF it but it's starting to give me DNF vibes. <laughs> up next is All You Need Is Kill by Hiroshi Sakurazaka. I read this for my sci-fi and speculative fiction film and literature class and you guys will hear me talk a little bit more about this and its adaptation in there. I gave this a four out of five stars. This was a ton of fun, one of the first mangas I've ever read. I've read a ton of graphic novels as you guys have heard me kind of speak about but this was so incredibly intense in like the best way possible. It goes through the understanding of the other when it comes to like aliens and foreign beings if you will and learning how to fight against those while our main character's day continuously repeats each time that he dies and he has to progress without dying and find new ways to battle the other as it continues to gain its own mentality and understanding of the world around it. The movie, mo blah, 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 blah. the movie adaptation of this is called Edge of Tomorrow, and I really like the movie adaptation. 
I wouldn't say more than the manga. I still think the manga is better in how things were executed, but it definitely enhances a lot of it. However, I would 100% recommend reading the manga before watching the movie and then choosing which you think is better, but I think they both complement each other really well and I think that's kind of difficult with a lot of book to movie adaptations. So this was definitely one of my favorite things that I read this month, but I wouldn't say it was my favorite. Moving forward, I read The Crowns of Crosswall by D.E. Knight. I was approached by the publisher slash the publishing team to read this and talk about it. In no way was I obligated to give this a good review in any sense, so any opinions are my own as I am with all of my arcs or any books that are sent to me by publishers, but this was a ton of fun. It was a middle grade, very magical, very good for the heart, I feel. There's a lot of growth in our main character and I found that this was just something so much fun. If you are a fan of the series that we don't necessarily talk about anymore, I think this will be a good way to kind of get you to experience those feelings again while supporting an author who is a little bit more low-key, has their own deal going on. DE Knight's website actually reminds me a lot of like Tinkerbell and Pixie Hollow, so there's a lot of magical whimsical elements in this being that it is a middle grade and I gave this a three star rating. I think it was a ton of fun, but again, I don't think it was anything like so mind-blowingly special that it was going to fill the void, if you will. But it really fills your heart with so much goodness. And I, I mean, I would recommend this, but at the same time, it wasn't like anything super crazy. There are more books in the series, however, I won't be continuing with it just because I don't feel that connection to it. The next book that I read was Me Q Club by Jack Harbin. This was so much fun. Our two main characters, Rex and Jordan, are kind of in a hate to love situation where one runs a book club all about romance books and one works at the bookstore and sees him buying all of these books all the time. The book club, however, has been dying a little bit, and so we see a grand effort and honestly, such a fun time. My only gripe with this is because it is a novella, it does feel so short and I could have used easily like another 100 pages to keep diving into this story and keep learning more about our characters. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars, however, that's not because I didn't enjoy it. Like, a 3 star rating is still a good rating. I just wanted more. This is you can't really, you can't see it fully, but it says Sweet Rose 1, which means it is part of a series. So I'm definitely going to pick up the next book that comes out and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm, I'm just excited to see what happens in these characters' lives. And so for only about 200 or so pages to get me invested enough to want to continue, I think that's a really good quality. Coming up next is The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert. This is probably one of my favorite books that I've read this month. I have an entire release day review. I read this book in like a 24 hour period and this book was just so good. It takes place over one day and our two main characters meet each other at the voting booth and it's just so incredible to see both the political message that goes into this in understanding why young voters don't vote or encouraging young voters to vote. It has the perfect atmosphere with some of the most perfectly flawed characters I think I've read in a really long time and it just explores so much passion while keeping things quite light. I definitely think like the youth of the United States need to read this. And I'm saying this in terms of people still in high school, whether they want to vote or not, uh, people in their 20s even. I think it's extremely inspiring and it really emphasizes the need for the vote in the United States especially. I gave this a five out of five stars in case that wasn't clear enough. And you can read my entire review on my blog, which I will link down below. Up next is a book in a series that I said I need to finish by the end of the year. And that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This is book one in the Shades of Magic series, and I actually ended up listening to this on my drive up to Sacramento when I went to go see my best friend, as you guys saw towards the end of the Beach Readathon vlog. I found that the atmosphere was there, the characters were there, I was really enjoying my time reading this. However, I also felt this slight disconnect, and that could be because I was listening to this over audio, but I really was just having such a good time with this. I do think that if I'm going to continue with the series, I need to read it physically so I can understand a little bit more and I do want to annotate it because I do own the entire series and I do have a feeling that it's going to be a favorite. I really do love Kel and Lila's dynamic. However, the ending just kind of, mm, you know, didn't sit right with me. I wasn't really happy with the ending and how that ended up working out, but it left a good cliffhanger and anticipation for what's to come next. I gave this a four out of five stars. Up next is the book that I struggled with. I'm gonna show it to you and then we're gonna start talking. 
It's the city of brass by S.H. Rockaborty. You guys probably know that myself, Elena, and Samantha buddy read this. I'll go ahead and link them down below. And I only have a handful of annotations in this. I just, I really, I couldn't care about this book the same way everybody else does. You guys saw just how emotional I got at having someone kind of represent who I was in a book in the Beach Readathon vlog. But I was just so upset that this story didn't hit the same way that it, it normally would. And that, in my opinion, this is an extremely overhyped book and I don't want to own this book anymore and that's kind of the saddest part. I gave this a 3.5 star and I don't know. I really don't have any other thoughts on this. I'm just kind of over it. The next book that I read was an arc called Mayhem by Estelle Lore. I also read and reviewed this book on my blog and I loved this. I would describe this as Peter Pan meets Outer Banks meets Lord of the Flies. And that's such a chaotic description, but this book was just so much fun. I think everything was explored really well. The, it just, it was so much fun. I know right now it has a lot of mixed reviews, but I really, really enjoyed it. There are trigger warnings for, and I'm going to read these off so I don't miss any of them. Domestic and child abuse, serial kidnapping, drug use, and a non-depicted suicide with full trigger warnings on Estelle Laura's website. So I will link all of that down below as well, as well as my review where I rated this a five star. Up next, we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I love this book. I love the fact that it has settings that I could relate to. I love the dark academia. I loved seeing how our main character was affected by every single person that surrounded her. I do know that this book could have done a little bit more for me. I listened to this over audio and I think that atmosphere definitely played a huge role in how much I enjoyed it. I'm really, really, really excited for book two. So I just, I can't wait to keep going with the series and learn more about Alex Stern and all of her crazy adventures. <laughs> I was talking about The Martian and how much I adored this book. Like, I love this book with my entire heart. However, I will say, if you're not a fan of hearing like numbers and math and science, this might not be the book for you. There were a couple of moments where I was like, okay, Mark, I don't need to hear your math. Just tell me how many days you're gonna live. But he gave me that level of sass after the fact. And if you've seen the movie and you think Mark is hilarious there, guaranteed you're going to think he is so much funnier in the book because there are a couple of jokes that they kept out and it's just he's so funny i'm trying to see if i can find he literally at one point once he starts to get into communication with nasa he says look a pair of boobs and you can see he put the little uh, text emoji thing of a pair of boobs favorite man child favorite book loved it Moving forward, I read Aphrodite Made Me Do It by Trista Matir. This was such a pleasant surprise because the- hello, are you okay? Because a lot of these poems stood out to me in a way that I was not expecting them to in even the slightest. The illustrations were absolutely gorgeous and I'm highly considering purchasing this and reading it physically because there's nothing better than experiencing in its entirety in the form that I think that you should read poetry books because there's a lot of aesthetics that go into this so I really really love this and I definitely want to give this a reread physically. Up next I read You Are The One by Cute Blackson. This kind of came to me at the perfect time in a very surprising way. Recently I had someone comment on my transfer experience video that they were happy to see me really really happy and I'm gonna be real and honest with you guys it took me a while to get to that point and so I can very joyfully and and proudly say that like Dude, I'm doing so good right now. So to have you are the one kind of validate certain things and almost make me explore the parts of my life that I haven't explored in a really long time, it just came at the perfect moment. I read this initially just to complete a challenge for the reading rush so that I could say that I read another book, but it surprisingly, it just hit right. I do think there were a few moments that I was kind of pulled from the story because the way Cute takes people on this journey of understanding that they are the one is through this expedition with just him. So it's him and another person and they have to take all these chances and all these risks and understand what it means to let go in order to understand what it means to be themselves. I think this was beautifully done and some of the things that kind of stood out to me is from the very beginning one of the quotes is what else is there to do but love and that i just i really had to put the book down for a split second i was like yeah you're right what else is there to do but love like why be stressed why be upset why be anything other than blessed to be where you are 
even if your situation is not the same as somebody else's. And then the second thing was forgiveness is something you do for you. So it definitely got me in my feels a little bit. It got me a little bit emotional, but overall this just was an amalgamation of everything that I needed in that exact moment and things like that are so surprising when they come to you at just the right time. And I gave this a four out of five stars. And if I forgot to say I gave Alfred I made me do it a five out of five. Up next is a book that I didn't really like, and that was China Rich Girlfriend by Kevin Kwan. Okay, well, I don't even know where to start with this one. I loved Crazy Rich Asians. I love the movie adaptation of Crazy Rich Asians. I did not love the sequel China Rich Girlfriend. I gave this a two star rating after debating between a two and a 2.5. I was like, is a two star like too harsh? Like, no, I really did not enjoy my time reading this. A lot of people do say that the sequel isn't as enjoyable as the first book, and I have to agree. I really, I don't know. They're just, after seeing the amount of excitement and power that goes into Rachel's character in book one, this one kind of follows everyone but Rachel and Nick, and although we do see them, it's not in the most positive light. Like, people are still just so mean to them, and the amount of toxicity in this family, it's not even, like, entertaining anymore. You know, when I think about, you know, that level of, like, dramatics, I think of telenovelas, I think of k-dramas, I think of any soap opera. This did not feel like any of that, it just kind of felt wrong. Everyone in this book is just so mean to each other, and Kevin Kwan, although yes, this book was written, like, years ago, still isn't sensitive to certain issues like, uh, using the R word, using the N word. I'm gonna see if I can find a list of trigger warnings for this, but I just didn't enjoy this. Not only was the sequel just not good, Kevin Kwan isn't somebody that I want to support. Quite frankly, I don't care about the next book, and some of the risks that Kevin takes with his characters, like, there's a moment. You know how romance has, like, the third act thing? The third act in this was terrible. I was so angry that that was the choice that was chosen to be made because it didn't make any sense. So I just, I really didn't enjoy this. This was just bad vibes all around. I know so many people who love this, but I, I just, I don't want this book on my shelves. I wish I didn't consume the story. And yeah, I just, not about it. Going to get rid of the series. Up next, I read The Brother Years by Shannon Burke. This is an arc that comes out on August 4th. This is also a book that I haven't finished, mostly because I was reading it, had a great time with it, didn't DNF it, but I am planning on reading it in August, and I did talk about it in my August TBR, so you guys will hear me talk about this in August wrap-up, just not right now. And as we're nearing down to the last couple of books, I forgot the book that is putting me in a slump. That is Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. As you guys heard with The City of Brass, I wasn't the biggest fan. Funny enough, as myself, Elena, and Samantha were trying to buddy read this, they finished this and I didn't. I just, I can't get with this story. I don't understand certain choices that are being made. And <laughs> because I'm a dummy, I realized that I had gotten the library copy of Empire of Gold, which is book three, got about 30% of the way through that and then realized, oh my God, I'm reading book three and not book two. So with that being said, I kind of knew what was going to happen with book two but I just kind of accepted book three because there are so many time jumps and inconsistencies in both the magic, both the way the story is being told and just it, I don't know. I'm currently reading this. I just got the audiobook from Hoopla. I am, I am reading The Kingdom of Copper, made sure that it was The Kingdom of Copper and not Empire of Gold. Like the only reason I'm still reading this is because I started book three and I kind of know where the story is going. And this is one of those situations where you know how people read the last line of the book and they kind of know what happens? This is one of those moments where if I didn't know what happened at the end of the book and how book three kickstarted, I don't think I would continue. Like, I haven't picked this book up all month and I've kind of been dreading it. So now that I have the audiobook, I'm just gonna kind of listen to about 30 minutes at a time, see if it piques my interest, if not, then I'll finally put down the book or I'll just kind of finish it whenever I choose to finish it. But like, good lord, am I not a fan. <laughs> Up next, I read Midnight's in a Mustang by Shannon O'Connor. If you guys follow me on Instagram and on Goodreads, you see that I read a ton of Shannon's poetry collections. I think she is one of the most surprising authors that I follow and that I interact with because her collections are so heartbreaking, but they put you back together in such a right way. She writes about 
trauma and about heartbreak and what it meant to love someone so deeply and have it not work out. I will, however, say Midnight's in a Mustang wasn't my favorite of her collections. I gave this a three star, I think. I gave Midnight's in a Mustang a 3.5 star. Like I said, it was good, but not my favorite. And she is definitely someone that I think a lot of people need to check out. I'm very lucky to receive her poetry collections as ARCs and review them ahead of time before they get released. And her newest one, I'm so excited to get to that in August. And just to continue supporting her and I love her and I love her works. However, Midnight's in a Mustang isn't my favorite out of the ones that I have read. And finally, I ended the month with a reread with Love Her Wild by Atticus. Oh, man, I love love. Honestly, I love love. And being in a really, really healthy place in my life was the perfect time to reread this. As you guys can see, I have a bunch of annotations here. And this was back when I first read the book in 2017, I want to say. Yeah. I read this in 2017, so my senior year of high school, the year that I graduated. For when I was in high school, this hit the hopeless romantic in me, but here I am now three years later, and I'm still really, really in love with this collection. There are certain ones that kind of empower you as an individual, as a woman, as someone who loves so deeply, and hearing some of Atticus's words are like, wow, someone can love me the way that Atticus loves. So not to be a head ass about that, but I really do love Atticus's collections. I'm kind of on a reread binge right now, so that's a little bit of a spoiler for my August wrap up, but I still think that this might be my favorite out of the three that he has released so far. Well guys, that's it. That is my July wrap up. We've officially made it all the way to August and July was probably one of my weirdest reading months, if I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know how or why things happened. It must have been because I was traveling so much and because of all of the readathons and whatever, but I am so excited for August. I kind of feel invigorated knowing that I did finish a bunch of really, really great books this month. However, you know, I did get a little bit slumpish at some point. So feeling that reinvigoration, especially with being settled in my apartment, being settled, obviously I'm not in the apartment right now, but being settled in my apartment and finding that flow again feels really good. So I have very high hopes for August, even though it's going to be kind of a crazy month with school starting at the end of the month. So I'm really, really hoping that I can read as much as I can before then. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in the month of July and what your thoughts are on them. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until then, I'll chat with you soon.